these cold walls of thunder bay chapter nine i walked back onto the wing to applause and cheering it was the most amazing welcome i could have wished for stanley and art came over and gave me a hug it was a hero's welcome it really was the lads filled me in on what had been happening while i was away there had been a few newbies come in but that was about it we all had a good laugh when ellis walked by his face was still all cut up and bruised after getting a chamber pot to the face oh how we laughed i was standing by the window looking out across the bay when art and stanley came up to me it's a calm night out there isn't it i asked they both nodded i had actually missed the view of thunder bay as mad as that sounds yes it really is a calm night art said stanley gave out a little laugh what i said they both looked at each other we're going for it tonight stanley said i knew exactly what he meant but i still needed to take a few seconds to let it sink in tonight i asked yes this is our perfect chance for it art said okay i said let's go for it what do we need to do right art started we'll go off and blow out the candles in our cells and put the pillows under the covers then we'll lay low for a bit maybe half an hour make it look like we've gone to sleep i nodded along taking in everything he was saying next I'll get the lads to start a fight at around eight, and when we hear it all kick off, we'll run for it and meet by the kitchen. We'll take it from there. Okay, I think we can do this, I really do, Stanley said. But should we maybe have a backup plan in case this doesn't work, he asked. If it looks like it isn't working, we just have to call it off and try again. But we can't really go wrong here, Art said. Our plan was in place. We went off our separate ways, and I began sorting out my cell. I saw Stanley pick up a few bits from his cell and put them in his pocket. He still had the poppy that Alice had given to him that night before we ended up in here. I didn't have anything worth taking. I blew out the candle and sorted out the pillows and laid down in the bed. I could hear everyone still laughing away with each other. It felt like it could have been the last time I ever heard that. I closed my eyes and just took it all in, the thought of getting out. We could be sitting in a bar later on tonight if all went well. But what if it went wrong? I didn't even bother contemplating it. I was so sure this was going to work. Something smashed outside the cell. I jumped up and looked over. Was this it? Seconds after the shouting started, the fights began. Within moments, the entire wing was fighting with each other. It reminded me of that night when the prison flooded not long after we got here. I looked around the cell and saw Stanley and Art sneaking out. I did the same. I crept along the wall past all the fights that were going on. I got to the end of the wing and ran for my life. I saw the other two jump ahead. We had made it. We were in the kitchen. Right, let's go, said Art in a whisper. We opened the rubbish chute and Stanley went in first. Off he went. Art began to climb in. We could still hear the riot going on in the background. Just as Art disappeared down the chute, the lights came on in the kitchen. Going somewhere? A voice shouted. It was Ellis. He must have seen us sneak away. Yes, away from here and away from you, I shouted. He grabbed me back and tried to hit me. You don't want to be doing that. I think you should be heading back down to confinement for a few months, he sneered. I elbowed him and tried to get away. He pulled me back and had hold of my throat. His grip was tightening. I tried to fight back with all my might, but he was too strong. I reached for something to hit him with. I got it, but I wasn't sure what it was. I didn't hit him. Instead, I stabbed him. He stumbled back against the wall. I stood for a second, just looking. But then I came to my senses. I opened the rubbish chute and made my escape. When I landed, the other two were waiting. What happened? Where were you? Art asked. Stanley must have seen the blood in my hands. What have you done? He asked. There was no time to explain. We had to run. We made a dash for it out of the rubbish yard. We were trying to work out exactly where we were. This way, Art shouted. We ran for it and followed him out of the yard and along to the front of the bay. That's when the alarm sounded and the searchlights came on. They knew we were out. Which way do we go now? Stanley shouted. We could see the bay. We just couldn't see how to get there. We ran around the side of the bay, but we couldn't find out how to get past the fences. Then we saw it, a small gap. We can get through here, I said. I began to try and get through. Hurry up, lads, we've got company. I could see the guards running down the steps out of the prison. We still had time. We could still make it. I was helping Stanley through when Art shouted, They're coming! He started to climb the fence to try and make his own escape. Art, no! He pulled himself up with all his might. 
but he forgot that the top of the fences were electric. He only touched one bit of the fence and got a worse shock than you got from old Sparky. He fell to the ground lifeless. He was gone. No, Stanley cried. We don't have time, Stan. We've got to run for it. We set off down the bay as fast as we could. The guards were hot on our heels now. We're not going to make it, Stanley cried out. We just kept running and running, hoping to get to the boat before the guards got us. There must have been a hole in the ground, because Stanley caught his foot in it. He crashed down to the ground, clutching his ankle in agony, the same ankle he had broken years before. George, I'm down. Keep going and free yourself. Once again, I had to make that decision. Leave my brother and be free, or stay with him and get a fate worse than death. Stanley, I'm staying with you. I'm never going to leave you again. Stanley went into his pocket and pulled out the poppy and held it close to him. Run, he said. I'll be fine. It broke my heart, but I turned to run. I only got a few steps away from him when the gunfire rung out across the bay. I stopped and turned round slowly. They'd got him. Stanley was dead. He was slumped over, still holding the poppy in his hands. I cried out, Take me, go on, take me, let's end it here and now. I fell to my knees and crawled over to Stanley and I held him. I cried like I never cried before. You bastards, you should have taken me, I called back. The guards came running over, guns pointed at me. Go on, shoot me, take me. Two of the guards jumped at me and had me in handcuffs. I cried back towards Stanley. I'm sorry, brother, I should never have left you. They carried me back into Thunder Bay.